Let's use the ground floor as a reference and see some viewing options. When customizing, we can insert the drawing scale indicator here. We initially use a default material layer, which we can replace with a different one. Or a legend object that automatically shows the material layers for the various building envelopes. Now, we are talking about composing our construction document and we definitely need to show measurement for our building. Let's see how to manage the measurement in edificios. In the 2D graphics section, we can use the linear dimension lines, select 2.2 measures, for example, from this point to this, and the program will automatically insert the measurement line and the relating measurement value. Again, I can use the linear measurement and define an axis along which I can use dedicated automatism to select objects and insert relative measurements or even measure along a section line and see all the measurements inserted automatically. Even rooms can be automatically measured up in one go by clicking inside the room or by clicking on the measure all button. As you can see, all measurements are quickly fixed into place and each measurement tag can be edited directly from the property toolbox on the right. We can also choose among various representation styles for our drawing model. In fact, in the style menu we can choose detailed, color, minimal or customize our own style by clicking on edit and set up lines, thickness, fill pattern and color for each layer in order to present our construction drawings in the style that we prefer. So for example, I hide this DWG CAD drawing layer, or we can customize the way windows are represented by adding or removing the seal, adjusting the openings, doors, and adding extra details. About the cross sections, here we have the same option, and in particular this relating to more or less detailed representation. Same things in elevation view. We can choose the representation style or for the isometric view a simpler representation by adding or hiding materials or just colors. Now let's see how to generate the isometric view cross section of a floor plan view. With the floor plan active we will click on the add cutaway view button. In an isometric cross section view is immediately created for which we can manage visibility. The option here allows us to choose whether to cross section free model, reset choice, set the transparency level for the sectioned part, or choose the color map for the cross sectioned part. From this particular view, we can also generate isometric cutaway view for each type of drawing model. Let's add the cross section here. Click on the button to add a cutaway drawing and notice that we have a 3D cross section view right across the staircase. Now it's just a matter of setting up the various options for cutting through other entities, the transparency levels and the sectioned elements identification colors. Now let's take a look at how to create a screenshot from this cutaway drawing and use it as an image in our working drawings. For example, let's start from this ground floor, click the S key, choose its size and resolution, and then click confirm. We can then decide whether we want to save this image in the current project as a subnode or save it externally to a disk. We will save it under renderings and thus you can see the new node is added. Let's see how to create a working drawings. In the Navigator 3 menu, we have the construction documents area. With a right mouse button click on the working drawings node, we can click on add. At this point, the program allows you to choose from a wide range of sheet layout and tile block configurations. We can customize it by choosing weight and height, or we can choose the classic standard sides, set it to portrait or landscape orientation, and choose between the different tile blocks, or if necessary customize them. Preparing a working drawing couldn't be easier. We simply drag the drawing model from the project navigator, 
for example this cross-section drawing or the plan view, isometric and elevation views or even the screenshot that we just created previously. This very straightforward working method allows us to prepare our construction documents and finalize them for printing. Clicking the print button, we can see that once the page is generated, all we need to do is either click on export as PDF or as DXF DWG CAD file format. Now let's move on to the terrain modeling section by accessing the Edificious Land module. To access the land environment, simply click here in the beam integration window. The first step when needing to define our land perimeter is to trace the outline. We can design it freehand or by clicking the import from Google Maps button to import a digital terrain directly from Google Maps together with the satellite imagery. This process also generates the terrain profile's contour lines. The main terrain modeling tools can be carried out by using the contour line, the elevation nodes and the contour plan. Let's start off with the contour line. A click to draw a polygon, then select the single curve and change its dimensions in the properties toolbox. Select and type the new dimension value. Another method of terrain modeling is using the contour plan with closed triangles. As we know, the three points of a triangle pass through a plane and when the plane is recognized, the triangle is highlighted in light green. We can change the height of each single point directly from the 3D view with the mouse cursor. Selecting the elevation node and typing in the new value or from the toolbox on the right in the elevation field. Another way to define the terrain morphology is to define an elevation node. A click insert the node, its elevation value can as always be defined in both 3D view or by typing in the new value. With these three single terrain modeling methods, the morphology is changing accordingly. But that's not all. Let's see how we can use the CAD drawing import and the entity detection tools even when digitally modeling our terrain from a land survey file. This is another automatism that can automatically generate a contour line and elevation nodes from a DXF DWG CAD drawing. Let's see this example to automatically recognize the contour lines. We will import our 3D CAD in the DXFDWG file format. Set the scaling factor, in this case 1, because the drawing unit of measurement is in meters. Place the drawing in the desired position and then modify the contour line color to make them more visible. As a first step, we will proceed with defining the terrain perimeter, so we will open the objects menu and choose the perimeter objects. And as we trace the perimeter, you can see that it is drawn with segmented lines. After finishing, we will click on the green check and then move on to selecting our contour line object in the object menu. Another magic wand tool will do all the modeling work for us. And with a selection rectangle, as you can see here, each contour line is generated as an edificious land entity from a traditional DWG land survey file. Notice that we have this terrain reference point, which is known as the terrain origin. This node allows us to align the ground to the building. Let's see how this is done. We will first place the ground origin, aligning it to a specific point of our building. In our case, we know that this edge has elevation equal to zero because it was previously defined in our level management section. However, whatever adjustments necessary can be defined as our new zero in the levels management. We will make the adjustment here. In this case, we have created a land profile that at a known point is 15 cm below the reference zero of our building. Of our building. This means that we have two reference systems, one relating to the land model and one to the building. But let's now take a quick look at some of the typical land-related objects, the road entity. 
The panel on the right show the object properties. We have the material layer and the width expressed in meter directly from here. And as you can see, it's always drawn by individuals node and with the F5 and F6 key, we can change the alignment axis. As we continue to define the road object, we can see that it adapts directly to the underlying terrain. At this point, we will click finish to complete the road insertion. The terrain cut at the side of the road will be perfectly vertical, both on the right and on the left. Therefore, we have already determined important cut and fill land survey data at hand. The road object can obviously be adapted to the terrain, adding an escarpment. This modeling tool will automatically model the various land objects, adapting them to the terrain morphology. In this example, we will insert 2 meter wide escarpment, and notice how the terrain starts to acquire a more realistic effect. Now let's see how to add a sidewalk to the side of the road. We can insert it on the right or left or even on both sides by simply assigning its dimension in this box. Let's insert an earthwork entity that can either be a cut or a fill. In this case, it will be an excavated area relating to the building's footprint. The terrain will definitely have a certain morphology and in our case we want it to be horizontal. In particular, by deactivating the terrain visibility, we can select our earthwork entity and thanks to this cursor, by adjusting the transparency level, we can refer to the surrounding object to use their snap nodes and magnetism to position it right at the base of the building. This turned out to be very useful for our building's foundation level. 